Welcome all of you to uh, uh, May 2021 Mother's Day event here at Living Word Worship Center. And thank you all of you out there uh, who are viewing remotely. And whew, I had a thousand things to say, but you guys already said it much better than that. So we'll see you next week. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Uh, but uh, I do want to say Happy Mother's Day to all of you, to everyone, especially the moms, and um, to my Spanish-speaking friends, Feliz Dia de la Madre, yeah. and uh, to my Italian-speaking friends, Bona Festa de la Mama, to all of you, and that's the extent of my multilingual... Uh, I won't be speaking in tongues, maybe, much more than that today. So, but I do, I do want to say this again. Mothers want more than anything to be with their children in church. No matter what you think or do, moms want this in their life because they've already been where you are and they know that there is no security other than the eternal security of God. Amen. And Rick, thank you for that testimony there. 
You asked me the question, do we trust God with the tithe? <clears throat> Let me answer it this way. The sun will never rise on a day that I will rob God for any reason to buy anything. Not to put food in my empty belly, nor clothes on my naked back, nor a roof over my bare head. <laughs> there is no such thing. While I am alive, I will not do this. You can live however you want to live. I appreciate that question. A very good friend of mine, he was a young minister at the time. He was... a. Uh, struggling financially a little bit and he had this amount of money and two bills to pay with he had one money and two bills so he asked me what should i do should i pay my bill or should i pay my tithe and i said you're asking me that i'll just read to you what the scripture says and then it's up to you so then that was Saturday he paid his tithe the next day and I kind of knew he would I didn't tell him what to do it's your business I don't tell you what to do I don't ask you for a penny I never will as long as I live for no reason I'm just saying if you know what you're doing if you imagine you can prosper by robbing God, then uh, you have deeper problems. But of course he did pay the tithe the next morning. And when he did, then I paid his car payment for him. And I, it doesn't matter. I won't remember what that car payment is or what that tithe is. But I will never forget the demonstration that God gave me that opportunity. And while this is not my theme for today, <laughs> I assume all people who know what they're doing certainly are tithers. I'll just assume that, and if, it, if it's not true, don't tell me. I gotta watch my attitude already on a bunch of other things. <laughs> I don't want that. <laughs> so, I'm glad we're not being recorded here today for the whole world to see. I could never deny it. But I, I've i already maybe made a terrible mistake by saying Happy Mother's Day because I just learned yesterday there's a new rule just in time for Mother's Day. Uh, you're not allowed to say mother anymore. Now you have to say the proper term is the birthing person. See, I didn't, see, I didn't even, I didn't. Security, security. We, we're on the verge of riot here. See, I didn't know that. I had this old ancient text, a couple thousand years old, and that's what I've been going by all this time. So I'm not up on this. So it, it turns out that uh, men also have babies now. Be, because all you have to do is say, I'm a man, and I'm having this baby, and there you are. You're a birthing person. <clears throat> yeah. So, about now, I'm wondering if uh, they may be running out of straitjackets in Washington, D.C. <laughs> so, I got this dusty old Bible. <laughs> all I have to go on so but you can't say that now you, you could be back in your Facebook jail or somewhere again I'm not going to mention any names and I'm not look I'm not looking over that way um, so I checked that concerned me I checked when you're up here you have to be accurate so I checked to see if my Bible had changed since I read it last nope 
I went to Genesis 3.20 and it said this, if you can believe it, it would say this bold of a thing in our enlightened day. And Adam called his wife's name Eve. Wife, can you imagine? How dare God use such a word as, as wife? Don't they know? Don't we know? This is what is what is I don't even know the terminology of why they of all I've lost track of all the reasons we're now hated. Uh, it's not wife, it's significant other or better yet, his inner relationship person. So God has a lot of nerve. But back then, you know, we didn't have the, um, the thought police and the word police. And we didn't have so many geniuses, you know, fact-checking us. So Adam, of all things, called her his wife. Wife. From the beginning, wife. And he named her Eve because, if that wasn't bad enough, she would be the mother, not the birthing person, but the mother of all living. This is, this is unacceptable. We can't have this kind of hate speech. We need to ban this book. Oh yeah, we already did, I forgot. We need to burn these. Oh yeah, we tried that too. Hmm. So, happy birthing person day. I want everybody to be happy. Then, if that wasn't bad enough, all of a sudden, now I'm worried about Mother Goose, and is she now birthing person Goose? <laughs> or wait, 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 wait. Or birthing transgender person Goose? Maybe. Maybe she was really a transgender and had all these baby. Are you allowed to say baby? Uh, uh, offspring or whatever. Gooses. Oh, you can't say gooses. Not proper. So she had all these little birthing person everywhere. So we better ban that book too. What if, what if this got into the hands of our children? What if our children were to see this? What if a Bible was, was to end up in a schoolhouse somewhere? Oh, that's right, there are no more schoolhouses. They went out with that. So, you know, and then what about old Mother Hubbard? Now she's old birthing person Hubbard. She had so many little birthing persons she didn't know what to do. She lived in a shoe. If she don't have it bad enough, now you have all this hate speech about her, calling her these names, these horrible names like mother. That's bad. What about the village vocabulary? They only have two words to begin with, F and MF. That's their in vocabulary. The village that, are, that, we're, uh, that has been assigned to raise our children. Preach it. it takes a village. So their vocabulary now is reduced to Birthing person F, they're not, they don't have an IQ that high. They'll never figure that out. Yes. 
2021, welcome. <laughs> welcome. For those of us who are no longer in university or not in Congress, where can we go to get this level of higher education? I didn't know any of this. This is a shame. Why don't we all get the memo? We've been doing it wrong, talking wrong, thinking wrong. We've been wrong. Who, who makes the call on this? Who makes that call? I'm not saying this. I'm just saying I was feeling this. I was feeling very close to saying when. But I didn't say it. So you can't put me in jail. One thing you can never accuse me of is hate. I hate what God hates. I hate ignorance. Ignorance is a blight. It's not a blessing. It's not bliss. Mother's Day began before most of us were born in 1876. As a Memorial Day for mothers, they didn't know. Who were still mourning their dead who were lost in the American Civil War. Fighting for the right to be birthing persons. Or whatever you want to be. I want you to be whatever you want to be. I stand between you and anybody who messes with you on that. But what I cannot allow you is, is to tell me what I have to be. No, you can't do that ever. On May the 8th, 1914, President Woodrow Wilson designated the second Sunday in May as Mother's Day for displaying the American flag. Not burning it, not stomping on it, not cursing it. What are you even doing here? And for the public expression of love, not of hate and reverence for the mothers of the country. What a horrible thing to pronounce on a nation such hatred. My mother passed on a few years ago but today, I honor my beautiful wife, Brenda, Jeremy's mother, both of whom I'm very well pleased with. Brenda has done nothing less than lay her life down for Jeremy and for me and for all of you. And for anyone and everyone she is not a birthing person, she is a mother. I appreciated what Pat said. He thanked his wife for helping him or causing him or allowing him to be a father. Only a mother can do that. Brenda has lived this for nearly her entire adult life. And she is the best. The very best. Her mother, she will say, was far better than her. As all good mothers always say. So, you continue, I'll continue. And I like my game better. And I think I'm staying with it. Bring me your science book and I'll bring you mine. Bring me your history book and I'll bring you mine. Bring me your philosophy book, I will bring you mine. 
bring me everything you have. Load up your trucks and bring them as quickly as you can. And I will bring my one book under my arm. And I feel guilty for taking advantage of you. Bring me your best and your brightest. And I'll show you the wisdom of this world is pure foolishness to the wisdom of God. Today is for mothers, all mothers. The mother whose priceless art collection hangs on her refrigerator door. That's right, I haven't seen any decent refrigerator door as, as is so magnetized by now. It's for moms whose children are struggling and she can't seem to reach them. They're hurting and she can't make the pain go away. Today is for single moms and married moms who could use more money to properly care for their children. Don't despair, mom. Your children think they're rich. They think they're rich. Most people don't grow up, you know, in Bill Gates type households. Thank God for that. There would be no mother. <laughs> Never mind. But the children don't see themselves as rich or poor. They just see what they see in their mother's eyes. And what they feel from her heart. They think they're rich. Yeah. Don't tell them they're poor. Don't ever tell anyone that. Pray for your children every day and never stop being their mom at any age. It's the most important job you'll ever have in your lifetime. There's nothing above this. If your textbook says it is, that's the book you ought to be burning. Not the good book. Not the book of life itself. Motherhood is an honorable institution and ought to be treated as such, as all decent people do. Exodus 20 and 12, honor your father and mother that it may go well with you and that you may live long upon the earth. That's a pretty big promise. Honor your parents or you can forget about a normal life. You'll live in a mental hell as long as you live if you don't resolve a few things. I appreciate what you said earlier, Kelly. There's great promise in this verse. Those who are disrespectful or disobedient to their parents often lead troubled lives and rarely end well unless they turn to Christ along the way. For them and for all living human beings, it is Christ or perish. Amen. And I'm not kidding. Don't take up religion. Throw it away. Take up Christ. Christ is the antidote for religion. All religion, which essentially inoculates or vaccinates people against the truth so that when the real truth comes in this person of Christ, you won't get it. You've already been vaccinated against it. Religion, as Karl Marx said, an interesting guy to be quoting here, 
is the opiate of the masses, and it certainly is. It is the dopiest thing ever invented. From the beginning was false religion that originated evil. The origin of evil came from the firstborn son of Adam, Cain, who murdered his younger brother, the second man born in the human race, his brother Abel, was murdered by Cain over their religion. And murder has continued to this day and goes on around the world as we speak. It's the same war. It's the same battle. It's the same spirit. It's the spirit of religion, the spirit of Antichrist, and the Spirit of God. And there is no other battle. That's right. We may not all have had honorable parents. I'm not saying that. I'm not naive. Some people have monsters for parents. Cruel and abusive and abandon them. And have all kinds of problems. And some have never even known or met. So there's, there's a million variables in a complex society like this. I understand that. But this commandment is not written to the parents. It is written to the children. We all are children of parents. Pretty smart, huh? I figured. My book. I got that from my book. It will go well with the children when they honor their parents for as long as they live on the earth. That's worth considering. 1 Timothy 3, 4. Bottom line. But mark this. I'm, I'm sorry, 1 Timothy 3, 1. But mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents. This is included in this group. This is pretty bad. Brutal. Not lovers of the good. Treacherous, rash, conceited. Lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying its power. This is liberal theology. Yeah. The liberal churches who are famous for believing absolutely nothing. Dead as dead can be. Dead letter condemns forever. If Christ, if your church can exist without Christ, your church is the church of Satan. Religion does just fine without God. Go through the motions. You can have a church service without the Spirit of God. You can have people congregate in a room and lift their hands and sing hymns and, and contribute money and, and give speeches. But without the Spirit of God, The clock is ticking away yes. on your demise. Christ or perish. Plenty of denominations. Plenty of so-called Christian churches around. Christian church. I don't mean the non-Christian. There is, there is zero chance that any of that has any redemptive value whatsoever. On the contrary, the opposite of truth. But without Christ, Christianity cannot exist. It ceases to be. If Christ were dead, there are places all around the world that's, that are doing the same thing we are. It looks externally like right now this moment. But if Christ were dead, they wouldn't notice. It would change nothing. They could still go through the same motion. But without Christ, we perish immediately. We are extinct. 
without him. He is the head of this body and none other. Je Jesus was clear. Unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He cannot enter the kingdom of God. With, unless he has my spirit, he is none of mine. This is a spiritual kingdom. We enter this kingdom the exact same way that we entered this world. We were born into it. So we are born into the kingdom of God. Reborn. Born the second time. New birth. By our faith in Christ. Exclusively. Excluding all other props and support mechanisms and safety nets. And just to be on the safe side. You cannot add by any means or any efforts to the free gift of God which is perfect and complete as it is. You can do nothing to increase or decrease it. It is wholly the act and the, and the dimension and the gift and the purchase of God. It is completely, entirely A to Z, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, Him for us. If Christ Christianity is defined not with tomes and volumes and libraries and it's defined as a single, a single phrase. Christianity is Christ in you. Till Christ is in you, you are not in the kingdom of God. Mothers, fathers, children. There are no, there are no exceptions. It's not an exclusive club. It is the only totally, fully inclusive invitation to the whole entire world. Whoever wants to come, let them come freely. Everyone. You don't need another one. No other one will do. You only need Christ. It's not bigotry. It's not discrimination. It is the opposite of that. It is the cure for that. It is the antidote for all of that. Try visiting some churches and see how long you have to sit on the back pew before they let you into the club. If you, if you don't belong the moment you cross the threshold to this building, if you're not in right then, there's something wrong, you ought to question why. What's wrong with me? Why am I different from you? This invitation is to whosoever will. You let them come. Without scrutiny. There's no screening committee. There's no checklist. There's no Sanhedrin anymore. There's no one can keep you out. And no one can force you in. It's you. You are a free human being. Resist all efforts to take you from to rob you of your freedom before anything, before all things. Freedom. God is the ultimate free spirit and made us with that very spirit as well. That's why man instinctively, a little baby, automatically rebels and resists and and, and it acts normal. He has an instinct to resist control and power over him. He wants to do it his way. He always, it's in his DNA. It's in him. It's in his blood. The wonderful good news is all of this rebellion can be directed in a way toward the kingdom of God, toward a wonderful life. God forbid it goes the other way. We know the result of that. We are wired perfectly for, we're a good fit, we're a perfect fit for the kingdom of God. We're a perfect fit everywhere we go. 
We are not outsiders. We're not outlaws. We're not intruders. We're not here by permission or approval of any government entity or anyone else on this earth. We own the place. Wherever our footsteps, God has given it to us. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. We are not the outlaws. We are not the criminals. We are not the haters. We are the, the carriers of the message that can deliver anyone and everyone from all of these things. Jesus is not the problem. Jesus is the solution. You don't have a problem that Jesus is not the solution. You just looked at religion instead and said, that makes me worse. And you're right. What we need is the cure. We don't need further condemnation. We don't need somebody to stand up and tell us every week what horrible sinners we are. We deal with that all week. We need someone to say, what a magnificent Savior there is. His name is Jesus, and there is no other name given under heaven whereby men must be saved. Jesus, Jesus, only no other. Yes. Yes. I didn't even finish this, did I? Oh yeah, oh yeah, I had the, the last line. Having a form of godliness, but denying its power. There are plenty of people comfortable in plenty of church houses as long as you don't m mention anything spiritual or miraculous or anything that they can't control or explain. If it goes beyond the natural five senses, they're out. They were never in. Amen. You cannot belong to this kingdom unless it begins with a miracle. A miracle of birth, a miracle of rebirth. The moment that your faith mixes with the word that you hear, there is a conception that takes place in your heart. You become pregnant with eternal life, not natural life. This seed never dies. Having a form of godliness but denying its power. Have nothing to do with such people. Many claim to be Christians, but they are not. You are not a Christian because you belong to some church. If you trust in a church or pastor or priest or pope or padre or anything else but Christ, Christ alone is worthy. Christ alone is the Savior of the entire world. Anyone and everyone at any time, anywhere who calls on the name of the Lord to be saved, it will be done before your breath leaves your body. You can't stop it from happening. It is a miracle conversion. There are too many natural conversions. We joined another organization. We went through the classes. We filled out the thing. We pay so much dues. We're in. We're going to heaven. Leave me alone. Get off my back. God would never leave you alone. That only works out here in the daylight. What about when you're laying at bed, in your bed at midnight, and there's nobody there but just you and your lost soul speaking to you? What about that? It's crying, Abba, Father, all night long. And you're saying, I'm already a good fill in the blank. What about that? I'm telling you there's an answer for that. There's something that can not only fill in that blank, but fill that gaping hole in your heart. Motherhood is a sacrifice. 1 Samuel 1.10 and 11. In bitterness of soul, Hannah wept much and prayed to the Lord. And she made a vow saying she was trying to become pregnant. O Lord Almighty, if you'll only look upon your servant's misery and remember me and not forget your servant and give her a son then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life. And no razor will ever be used on his head. When you saw a person 
who had never been shaved or that person, this is a so-called Nazarite vow. This was a holy man. His whole life was reserved and given over to God and he has no outside interest whatsoever. He is holy God's possession. So Hannah says, if you'll give me his son, I'll give him back to you for life. This is a mother. This is not a birthing person saying that. Hannah means gracious. Gracious means unconditionally caring and giving always to all people at all times and makes no distinction among people. Just a kind person to everyone. Verses 27 and 8, I prayed for this child and the Lord has granted me. There's a lot of drama between, but we're, we don't have time. I prayed for this child and the Lord has granted me what I ask of him. So now I, I give him to the Lord. She's speaking to the high priest there at the, at the temple of Levi. For his whole life he'll be given over to the Lord. And she whispered, I mean, and she worshiped the Lord there. She was not afraid to give her child entirely to the Lord. How about you, Mom? You afraid he you afraid he can't watch over? He might go to sleep on you. You could do a better job than him. Who's going to watch him when you're not there? Sooner or later, you're going to have to give up that what, separation anxiety thing. Sooner or later, you're going to be apart. You won't be there. Who then will watch him? TV's going to watch over him then? Yeah. We sure run out of time now. Moms, be willing to put your children into God's hands. Rick asked me the question, do you trust God? Do you trust God? I ask you this question. You tell me what you cannot trust God with. I'd like to know because I can come up with a real sermon about that. I'm looking for sermon material here today. Tell me what God cannot be trusted for. It's going to be a lean time, I'm afraid. Offer them to God for His purpose for their life. You think your purpose is better? Afraid God will send them to Africa? God will send Africa to you if you believe. It's not unlike a mother sending her son or daughter off to war for a greater cause than her own son. How much do you love your son? To trust him only under your care? Or under the divine hand of God? They're not exclusive. They're inclusive. You see, the problem with that is before you can dedicate your children to God, I see this sham thing all the time. They bring their children into the temples and the houses and the synagogues and the churches and we dedicate with pomp and circumstance our children to the Lord and we ourselves are not even dedicated to God the way you dedicate your children is dedicate yourself to God First Samuel 2.20 next chapter Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife saying, that was her husband, Hannah's husband, and the Lord give you children by this woman to take the place. When she was there praying, here's what Eli said to her. Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife saying, may the Lord give you children by this woman to take the place of the one she prayed for and gave to the Lord. After she gave Samuel, her child, to the Lord, Eli is now, Eli said to Hannah, when she prayed, as she was leaving the temple, Eli said to her, the Lord will give you what you ask. Amen. And when he told her that, she immediately worshipped God because she knew it was the truth. Amen. When are the preachers and the priests going to start speaking for God instead of boring people about some God they don't even know? Speak for God. Thus saith the Lord. God says yes. That's right. Say it. You afraid of being embarrassed? Or are you afraid of being wrong? You can't do this work. You can't stand here. You've got to take a chance. Right. You've got to put your reputation on the line. 
You've got to give up your identity and assume His. If your name means nothing, the world will never miss you. But if His name is besmirched, how can we live? The Lord will give you children to take the place of the one you prayed for and gave to the Lord. Then they would go home. And the Lord was gracious to Hannah. She conceived and gave birth to three sons and two daughters. So she couldn't have any. Then by a miracle, you hear me? A miracle. Not just a form of godliness and denying the power. But the power denying the form of godliness says you'll conceive. And she said, I'll give him back to God. Eli said, you get five to take his place. Plus him. She would go every year and visit him once a year. That's tough, Mom. You only get to see your kid one time a year. But, oh, if you, if you knew the love of God, you, it is not possible to know the dimension of love that you could have for your children, for your husbands, for your families, for this world. You could not possibly conceive of this love until you first know the love of God. You love your children? Of course you do. That's natural. Animals do this. That's instinct what you're talking about. I'm talking about love that's unconditional, that comes from above, that's bigger than anything you can imagine. It's indescribable. It's unconditional. People say, I die for my kids. So The Bible says, so would a mother bear. You better not run across her if she's got cubs. She would gladly die for her animal, her offspring. So, we're bragging about this. There's something better than dying for your kids. It's called living for them. God rewarded Hannah for Samuel with three boys and two girls. If only we would trust him as Hannah did. <laughs> okay, we're already in Mother's Day 2028. <laughs> um, I, I do need to make this one more. Mothers are trainers. Trainers. Proverbs 22, 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. When he is old, he will not depart from it. The, the next verse. I never hear anybody quote this. In the same, it's in the next verse. The rich rule over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender. Teaching is telling them what to do. Training is showing them what to do. Train by example to live virtuous lives. Do your best to observe from a distance. Notice their natural inclinations and their gifts. See which way they gravitate to and then try to provide the training, the music lessons, the hockey lessons, whatever it is that you see. Try to provide that and equip them so they can pursue this if it's their life's calling. Train up your children to pay their tithes. We mentioned that earlier. And not to rob God. The little children ought to be the first ones to learn to give. The people of God ought to be the lender and not the borrower. We ought not to be head over heels in debt. People ought to be coming to us borrowing money. What in the world? This is upside down as it could ever be. The village would teach them that robbing everyone and living off the public dole are great career choices. If you don't teach them otherwise, if you, let, if you let the world teach your children and raise your children and hirelings to raise your children, then turn the TV on when you get home tonight, you'll see your children. Train up your children to speak the language of the Spirit before the village trains them to speak their language. We know that's a two-word vocabulary. That's what you'll hear around your house. They'll be saying these words around your house. When the parents are too lazy or don't see the need to bring their children to church where they will learn the ways of the Lord, then let the grandparents do it. Amen. If the grandparents won't do it, let Aunt Sophie do it. 
Let the neighbor do it. Let somebody do it. Don't let these kids perish because we're too lazy to raise them up and train them up. It's their life we're talking about. This is not optional. This is not state mandated government propagandization. How do you like that? <laughs> had, had to go slow. Good? Good. That's the opposite of education. It's not education. It's reincarnation of their professors sending their apostles of apostasy into the world to reproduce the havoc that they preach in their classroom, so called. That's what you got. That's when you have a birthing person and not mothers. I lost my place. People listen. People are quick to condemn child abuse, as you ought to be. But child neglect is also abusive. That's right. sure. To neglect children's spiritual training causes incalculable or irreparable harm to them and all but sentences them to a life of hell on earth. If you don't equip your children spiritually as they grow up, who do you think is running this world? It's not the Spirit of God, it's the Spirit of Antichrist. That's what they'll face. And they have to join or be destroyed. They will join. By then, by then, they've already been changed. It will look, it will look like, it will look normal to them. You better get started now. Children belong in church from the cradle. Not after they get old enough to make up their own minds. Are these teachers, is this, or is society waiting till they get old enough before they indoctrinate them? What are you waiting on? Matthew 18, at that time the disciples came to Jesus saying, it's a good question. Who is the greatest in the kingdom of God? Kingdom of heaven. Then Jesus called a little child to him in the midst of them and said, Assuredly I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. We are not their example. They are our example. We should be like them. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one little child like this in my name receives me. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin or to hinder them from coming to me, it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Pretty subtle about it, isn't it? That's a little bit foggy, I know, but... Finish up with this. Galatians 3.28 There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, and there are no other genders. Bring your book. Male and female created he them. Husband and wife created he them. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. You won't find this value system in any so-called women's rights groups. Only in Christ are mothers properly valued. Only in Christ. From the time that Eve was targeted by the devil in the Garden of Eden until Jesus gave us new birth, women have been discriminated against, abused, and devalued by evil men and women. Ladies, you are not equal to men. You are far superior. Yes. The crown jewel of all creation is Eve, the mother of all living. Amen. Amen. Finally, happy Mother's Day 2021 from the Living Word Worship Center. If you mothers know what you're doing, Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. God bless you. Thank you. That's
Kelly. That's Kelly. That's Kelly's prospect. There's here's your prospect, Mike Kelly. Okay, come up here. Come up here. Bring it up here. Bring it up here. We're still on. We're still on. Bring it up here. Okay, Mike. Hey. We have our we have our beautiful prospect at Kelly Johnson with her brand new bike here. All prospects from yeah. now on. This way. Well done. Well done. God bless you. Bye bye. <laughs>